This presentation will focus on the relaminarization of a supersonic boundary layer subject to a strong convex curvature. Presentation by yours truly, Dr. Kenneth Jensen and Dr. Guillermo Araya. Let's start with a brief introduction and some motivations for the present study. So the combined effect of pressure gradients and streamline curvature plays a crucial role in the boundary layer physics and aerothermodynamics, especially at high speeds. This is in part due to complex geometries associated with high-speed aircrafts. So studying these effects will provide insights that are applicable in the design of hypersonic vehicles, scramjets, space planes, among others. So depicted in, in the figure currently on slide is a, the geometry for the present study. It starts with a sm small inlet region followed by a concave wall, a ramp, and then a strong convex curvature, uh, which induces a favorable pressure gradient. The flow conditions are at Mach 2.5, and the inlet and concave regions closely resemble that of the work by Donovan and others, uh, which were conducted at Reynolds number of 44,000 and a incoming Mach free stream number of 2.86. The, a validation of uh, the present DNS was conducted last year at the Division Fluid Dynamics meeting at uh, Seattle. Main objective of the present study is to investigate convex wall curvature on a supersonic spatially developing turbulent boundary layer in a Mach number of 2.5 via direct numerical simulation to assess reverse transition via two point correlations. Albeit this sounds a bit broad. The extensive information supplied by the high fidelity DNS will be used to evaluate the effects of strong curvatures on coherent structures and reverse transition. Now let's discuss some high level details of the present simulation, which include a Mach number of 2.5, an inlet uh, Reynolds number of 1000 and quasi adiabatic wall conditions. Uh, in the video and the animation that you're currently uh, seeing shows the uh, Q criterion just to illustrate regions of high deformation on the inlet and the concave portion and the ramp, which uh, precedes the convex curvature. Also at the bottom, the instantaneous Mach number just to illustrate uh, instantaneous inflow conditions and the um, concave region. Towards the right, see the mesh configuration for the present study which includes a strong concave uh, wall towards uh, the beginning of the domain. And uh, the main interest for the present study is the convex region, which is a very strong convex curvature. The inflow information is based on a previous run. Uh, more details on the uh, reference number three, which is towards the end of the presentation. Now to discuss some High level validation results towards the left, you see the evolution of the kinematic viscosity using various definitions throughout the domain, just to highlight both near wall and free stream effects on the uh, kinematic viscosity. Now, towards the right, you see the normalized wall pressure throughout the domain with experimental points by Donovan and others, which already alluded to at the beginning was the inspiration for the domain of the current study. Uh, and you see the pressure increases by nearly 2.5 times from the incoming conditions throughout the concave portion. And then there's a nearly zero pressure region such as the uh, incoming inlet throughout the ramp and follows by a precipitous drop at the convex portion of the domain, which is the main interest of, these, the, of the present study. And now focusing on the Reynolds number distribution throughout the domain, as I previously alluded to, see an incoming Reynolds number of around 1300. There's a roughly 5x increase in Reynolds number, followed by a drop throughout the ramp. It stays mostly constant, similar behavior to the uh, wall pressure. And then sees a drop again to Reynolds number levels that interestingly, should be enough to sustain turbulence. However, uh, if you look at the upper uh, right corner, see the uh, flow is evidently in a much more organized state followed 
uh, after the supersonic expansion, and we could argue that it's in a laminarian state. Nonetheless, this is all with an acceleration parameter below the widely accepted threshold of 3 times 10 to the minus 6 for a relaminarization process to occur. Now moving on to uh, flow visualization. And here we focus on the streamwise instantaneous velocity at the top. At the bottom we see the streamwise velocity fluctuations towards the end, as I previously alluded, a much more organized flow. It's also seen at the instantaneous temperature profiles, much more turbulent state in the ramp. Perhaps here we can see it in a much more clearer state with an enhancement of the turbulence throughout the concave portion and see the annihilation of the turbulence towards the end. And at the bottom, you see the instantaneous flow detachment depicted by a, a CN portions. Again, now let's uh, study for but the several things that are going on here. As I just mentioned, we see the instantaneous flow detachment at the bottom induced by the adverse pressure gradient throughout the concave wall. There's an enhancement of the turbulent nature of the flow uh, due to the adverse pressure gradient imposed by the concave wall. And what could be argued to be a reverse transition to a laminarian state after the supersonic expansion towards CN. And again, what you see in here in the top portion is the instantaneous velocity uh, colored by the velocity fluctuation. And here we focus on something similar at the top, the velocity uh, colored by velocity fluctuations. In the bottom now, you see the temperature profile colored by the fluctuation. And qualitatively, we could argue that the Reynolds analogy suffers a weak, albeit notable, compressibility effect, as can be inferred from the similarity in both thermal and the velocity boundary layers. However, most notable differences are in the adverse pressure uh, gradient region and the ramp, where most notable distinction between both uh, boundary layers can be seen. And this is, of course, qualitatively. Now, moving on to giving a brief introduction of to two-point correlation. Two-point correlation offers information about large-scale structures by relating two points separated either spe uh, spatially or temporally. Uh, the TPC can be expressed both in the Fourier and physical domains. However, Fourier domain uh, has more memory requirements due to the uh, complex numbers required in, in many of the calculations. For the present study, uh, due to the aforementioned uh, reason, we formulate the TPC in the physical domain, as can be seen in the equation towards the bottom, which is formulated in terms of inner products of two signals separated by a lag, which is in this case the R vector. And here, studying the evolution of the two-point correlation of the streamwise velocity in the buffer region, we see how the structures contract and thicken in the wall normal direction due to the adverse pressure gradient. They again return to similar levels as the incoming CPG throughout the ramp, which is expected due to the uh, CPG conditions uh, in the near wall uh, region, as we saw with the wall pressure distribution. But by far, the most dramatic effect is seen in the FPG region that occurs due to the uh, supersonic expansion, where the structures are dilated significantly to roughly one and a half boundary layer thicknesses. Moving up to the log region, we see structures are uh, much more thicker and more well-defined. Uh, here, the behavior is dissimilar to what was seen in the, uh, in the buffer region where the structures continuously grow as we progress through the domain, we see structures getting significantly longer uh, as we evolve through the domain and also uh, thicker in the concave region. And again, uh, by far the largest dilation is seen after the convex portion of the wall.
in the outer portion of the boundary layer, we see incoming structures are relatively um, small in terms of their uh, overall footprint. They again suffer an elongation and a thickening uh, by nearly double in the concave portion. And again, they continue to grow as was seen in the log region in the ramp. And again, uh, the behavior, albeit in the outer region, is not as dramatic as was previously seen. The structures are elongated up to their longest point in the FPG region. Now moving to the thermal two-point correlations, the behavior is analogous to what was seen in the buffer region for the velocity, um, which we could probably argue for in particular in the incoming CPG and in the ramp region for a sustainment of the Reynolds analogy based on the information gathered from the two-point correlations. And we also see the structures again thickening in the and contracting in the concave portion. And again, the dramatic elongation dilation in the uh, FPG region. Now moving on to the lock region, again, a very similar behavior to the one seen in the velocity be it here some notable distinctions in terms of inclination and dimensions. And we see again the um, very long structures that are seen in the FPG region, which could probably be attributed to the reorganization of the flow and the higher strain rates that are experienced in this region. And now moving to the outer region, Mostly structures tend to be similar, but again, there's a doubling in the length of the structure in the concave region, tripling with respect to the incoming region in the ramp, and the longest structures are seen in the FPG region. Now on to some high-level remarks regarding the two-point correlation. Nearly all the near-wall structures experience a streamwise contraction and wall normal thickening due to the adverse pressure gradient imposed by the concave wall. Uh, all structures exhibit a very notable dilation due to increased strain rates after the supersonic expansion. Uh, both the inlet and ramp CPG regions are notably similar in the viscous sublayer, be it not shown, and the buffer layer, which was shown. Uh, and last but not least, the Reynolds analogy does suffer a much more notable breakdown in the APG region and the following CPG RAM when compared to the incoming flow and FPG region when were relatively weak compressibility effects were noted. Now some take home messages. Very strong convex region induces a reverse transition into a laminar in state even at a relatively low acceleration parameter. The laminarism state is observed at Reynolds number that are or should be sufficiently capable of sustaining turbulence. And the coherent structures in the FPG region are significantly elongated after the supersonic expansion due to increased strain rates. And some future work includes performing a simulation at three times higher Reynolds number, which would require a mesh of roughly 400 million grid points, generate full 3D two point correlations, and explore cross correlation and two point cross correlations on both the present case and the future the higher Reynolds number case, or present references for the uh, work presented. If there are any questions, you feel, feel free to reach out over email or, or the platform for the conference. Thank you all.